So I'm off New York for three days on Wednesday, back Sunday, then straight on to Zurich, meetings all day Monday, then Tuesday, no, Monday night, fly to Brussels, then uh, on to Dusseldorf Wednesday morning. Wow, busy schedule. What do you do? Then home again for two days, then back to bloody New York again. What do you do for a living? I don't know. <laughs> you must know what job you do. No, I have literally no idea. I travel all over the place and have meetings with other men who look very like me, and we josh about golf handicaps and, you know, the wives' breasts, but I really don't know why. <laughs> See that? Christ alone knows what that's all about. You must have some idea what you do. What's your company called? PHP Residual Solutions. It's not much of a clue, is it? Um, well, let's narrow it down. I mean, uh, you're obviously not a fireman. No, and I'm not a baker, otherwise I'd have uh, one of those, those hats. hats. <laughs> I'm not a supermodel, I'm not prime minister, I'm not an astronaut, shepherd, priest, chocolatier, life coach, bullfighter. I'm not a special needs classroom assistant, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the secretary of a Scottish country dance society. Oh, um, maybe you work for one of those companies that coats things in plastic. Like they, they, they take metal things and they coat them in plastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, could be. Yeah, why, do, why not let's say that? Sounds plausible. Great, what do you do? I work for a company that coats metal things in plastic. <laughs> That's what made me think of it. Hey! Oh, you old bastard. I didn't know you were getting this flight. How's work? Oh, that's great. Not interfering with your goal for home? Oh, no. Still swinging away like the wife's knockers. <laughs> <laughs> After two days of, frankly, not very much happening, Dr Richard has discovered something in the North Trench. I'm just off to speak to him now. Dr Richard, I've just been told you've made a startling discovery. Yes. Archaeology's f***ing boring. <laughs> You have both been found guilty by court-martial of cowardice, desertion and disobedience in the face of the enemy. The sentence of the court is that you are to be executed by firing squad. God save the king. So is you saying he was going to shoot us all up with guns and this and that and everything else? <laughs> that is the sentence of the court. But he's on your side, man. You're not meant to shoot us up. You're meant to shoot up all them other geezers, like the Germans or Italians or whatever they're supposed to be, isn't it? Yeah, we've never done nothing anyway. Some other geezer did all them things you said. I'm not even lying. You mean the brethren's innocent? And I swear on my nan's life and she's in a home with a disease and all this? Do you have any last requests? Can I sit down, blood? My legs are well extending up. You may not sit down. Well, then I'll need my inhaler. I was asthmatic. I could actually die. <laughs> Did you confiscate his inhaler? That's abuse. He could actually die. Isn't it? We're both about to die anyway. Squad! I had this asthma attack once, right? And I couldn't breathe for eight minutes. And I had to go hospital. And the geezer gives me all like steroids, what are made from a dead man's balls and that. <laughs> no way, is they all made from knackers? That's skanking. Squad, take aim. This is so unfair. I want a community sentence. Being shot might affect me emotionally. <laughs> On my command, you will fire. All right, Biffy. All right, Mum. All right, Biffy's Mum. You've been picking on my boy again and his mate and all this and chatting shit about stuff they've never even done. <laughs> Madam, remove yourself. You have no right to be here. Your son and his fellow officer have been found guilty by court-martial. Don't shit me about. You've been after him since day one. Any little thing and you have a go. Like when he bombed Portsmouth. There was an accident. No, no, it was not. I'm taking these boys back home, yeah, for some trips and a Savaloy. And you try and stop me and I'll say you touched their asses. <laughs> Stop that this instant. No way, blood. I was keeping them all for, cos you was a pedo and I'm not even lying. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? No, but isn't it? Harsh! <laughs> We're standing in the Rembrandt House Museum on Jodan Breestraat in Amsterdam to see an extraordinary piece of art. This seemingly modest pen and ink drawing by Rembrandt is in fact one of the most magnificent representations of humanity ever committed to paper. Just take a look at some of this quite incredible detail. The nominal subject is, of course, Christ among the money changers. But the real matter in hand is the vulnerable nature of humanity. Look at the fear in the faces of these merchants, how they clutch despairingly at their material wealth. As a simple pen and ink study, I think this may well be without equal. The level of skill and compassion recorded here are truly
truly remarkable. If one had to give it a value, one could only say that it is absolutely priceless. <laughs> Infer me, people. We're more like the Germans than the French. Right. Tea is better for you than water. Noted. Ikea doesn't sell paddling pools. You've got to be kidding. I've got Jim Fairbanks on hold. Keep him there till he's crying. Some people are ambivalent about Marmite. Yep. Shakespeare couldn't be bothered writing on Thursday. Well done. You can't beat a good cry. Oh, man. On June the 22nd, it was hotter here than in Ibiza. What was I doing? Uh, you had a barbecue. Yes. Iced tea's chilling in his hot tub. Noted. People don't know each other's phone numbers anymore. No. No, they don't. You're about to fall into a great big hole. What are you talking about, Declan? <laughs> I, I did warn him. Uh, careful. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to The Critical Factor. Our contestants tonight are Michael Thompson, a consultant civil engineer from Halifax, West Yorkshire. Hello. Simon O'Connor, a consultant civil engineer from Newbury, West Berkshire. Hello. Susan Small, a housewife from Winchester, Hampshire. Hello. And Christopher Oust, a consultant civil engineer from Boston, Lincolnshire. Hi there. <laughs> Steady on there, Christopher. <laughs> so, for the next half an hour, we'll be testing these contestants' wits with a series of mental and physical challenges. Tonight is the second to last heat of the first playoff heats in our third Group F draw finals. In 17 weeks' time, we'll know all the 63 finalists competing to be named the Critical Factor Superperson of the Year and take away this state of the art plastic trophy. <laughs> But that's still 83 weeks away, so let's start, <laughs> as we always do, with round one. The task is to complete the three-dimensional logic puzzle showing the UK's national grid and regional substations. <laughs> Your time starts now. The clue here is in getting the Horsham 60 megavolt uplink at the bottom of the map. <laughs> Michael has that piece the wrong way round. Christopher's worked out that no two adjacent colours can be the same, except for purple and buff. <laughs> Simon's just staring at his. It's beginning to take shape for Susan. And that's it. Well done. And for Michael... That's Christopher's puzzle completed. An excited celebration there. Simon having real trouble. Well, there you go, a valiant effort nonetheless. Let's see what that does to our scoreboard. Simon, a tough round for you, and that leaves you in last place with a critical factor of two. But Susan truly mastered that challenge, and into a worthy lead goes the housewife from Winchester, Hampshire, with a critical factor of ten. That's what it says here, trip to Fire Mountain, 6am hotel reception. Oh, someone's in the pool early. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I let you talk me into going up a volcano. If I die, I'm going to come back and haunt you for all eternity. Yeah, and how's that different to now? Hey. <laughs> Hello, ha! Hey. Hello, ha, Jim. Hi, Jim. Taking an early plunge. After a fashion. <laughs> I oh, couldn't wait to take your clothes off. Well, uh, to be quite honest, I uh, did it on a whim. I uh, jumped in from my balcony. <laughs> your room's on the fourth floor. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was up there thinking, you know, thinking about my wedding day and how it had been the best day of my life, right up until the point where I found my wife gobbling the DJ to Too Shy <laughs> by Catchy Goo Goo. <laughs> then I started thinking about them at it, you know, all the positions, the missionary and the other one. <laughs> and then I looked down at the pool and I thought, yeah, Pepsi flipping Max, I'll go for it! Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I was feeling a bit off and bothered because I, I've been up all night, you know, working through a few things. The minibar, for one. Hey, brumps. <laughs> oh, God, that'll be the minibar. I better get time we're here. Are you sure you're OK, Jim? It must be really hard being here like this. Oh. 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 Jim! Jim, what the hell are you doing? 
finger. Jim! She was all over me. I wasn't. I was trying to comfort you because I can see that you're in pain. Oh, yeah, right, Sal. Got it. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, it was nothing, Phil. She was just giving me comfort, which is absolutely not the same thing as relief. <laughs> yeah, it's OK, Jim. We'll just forget about it. You're obviously very hurt. And horny. <laughs> You're really not seeing me at my best. I even thought about finding one of them escort agencies. There's one of them in the book, Honolulu Honeys. Seen there, Rad? I'm on honeymoon. <laughs> gotcha. We've really better go, Phil. Are you off somewhere? Um, yeah, we're going to Fire Mountain. I, I don't know what it'll be like. I mean, it's eight <laughs> hours in a minibus for starters. <laughs> Fire Mountain, you know, sounds like a good place to dry off, you know, and uh, <laughs> be nice to have a bit of company. Uh, keep me out of harm's way. I can. Um, Get a bit down when I'm on me, huh? Oh, Jim. You poor thing. <laughs> Jim! Jim! Sorry. Sorry. That one was partly me. <laughs> Back to the back seat. <laughs> Mum's off to the shops with Baby. To make things easier, she's leaving him outside, alone. <laughs> but wait, is he safe? Remember, mothers, don't leave a pram unattended in a public place without applying the brake. <laughs> For baby's sake, apply the brake. My name is Dr. Tia. I live in Botswana, saving lives. Do you? <laughs> the people here have very primitive beliefs. Most of them would rather see a witch doctor than put their lives in the hands of a white devil like me. That's my bootway. Six months ago, I performed a life-saving emergency tracheotomy on his wife in the middle of a bustling marketplace in front of a crowd of some 300 people. It was a gruesome operation, but without it, I fear her cold could have got much worse. He was so touched, he gave me three small grains of rice, the equivalent of a year's salary. The dignity of these people is truly humbling. Africa. <laughs> Honestly, you wouldn't believe some of the dodgy things that Dan's into. He's totally twisted. Yeah, all right, OK. Well, I admit it, yeah, I'm a monster. Yeah, actually, no, having said that, I have got a thing about your gym socks. It I, don't, is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's like that. What is it with you guys? It used to make me keep them on if I'd been running. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, it's a bloke thing, you know, we're all closet perverts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you big weirdos. <laughs> I'm a bit weird. Oh, yeah, really? I like bunnies. Oh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Bites and bunny girls. <laughs> Strippers forever. Yeah. No, I mean, like, actual bunnies, you know, real rabbits. I've got about 30 in a hutch in my garden. There's nothing like the brush of a rabbit's fur on your skin, you know, the soft tickle of its whiskers, and the way its coarse tongue gives you goosebumps every time it licks your nipples. <laughs> I like to have two or three rabbits in the bed with me at night, pressed up against my naked back. And then I'll hold one of them really tightly at arm's length above me, you know, and squeeze it really hard till it shits on me. <laughs> that a bit too weird? Coming to the final leg of the critical factor assault course, and just five seconds between the leading contestants. But it's Christopher who's going to get over the line in first place and pick up ten points. Susan isn't far behind. And way back in last place, still making a valiant effort, is Michael. So, Christopher, was that a tough physical challenge? It's about average. Uh, Coming down the aerial side. <laughs> that was going to come off. Um, that didn't. So that was fine. Right, so, so that bit was OK. Yeah. So which was the toughest part? Um, probably coming down the aerial side. <laughs> Ten points to Christopher there as we head into the decisive final round. Where is he, Aslo? Tell me where Sheikh Hulami is. Talk! You are too late. His plan is almost at hand, and soon your land will burn in the eternal fire. Fine. What's that? Sodium pentothal. Truth serum. You think that scares me? 
Maybe not, but, uh, oh dear, is that an air bubble I see inside of it? That was careless of me, wasn't it? Those can be lethal. Wait, don't do this. Too late, Aslo. All right, I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell! He's... Happy birthday, dear! <laughs> Happy birthday to you! <laughs> you thought I'd forgotten, didn't you? Lights, please, Susie. So, so can we please do this later? Aslo was just about to tell me Halami's location. Oh, here he goes again. Work, work, work. <laughs> Take a load off, Andrew. It's your birthday, for goodness sake. Now blow the candles out. Sir, I must complete my interrogation. Don't forget to make a wish. Hit <laughs> <sighs> it. I better crack on. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. If you think you're going to get off that easily, mate, you've got another think coming. I'm going to take the birthday boy and the rest of the gang out for lunch at Pizza Express. <laughs> Sir, would you please, please listen to me? We're hearing chatter that Hulami's preparing another attack. I must find him! You know what I always say, Andrew? Birthdays should be mirth days. Hmm? <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, first thing tomorrow morning, we'll waterboard him. Come on. We better think about being on our way. Why can't we stay a bit longer? Well, I think your mum says you have people coming round tonight, so we'd better get you back in good time. Well, what about I go and get us all an ice cream? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, please, Suki. I like Suki. Yeah, me too. Dad? What is it, my old China? <laughs> Are you and Suki going to get married? Wow. Whoa, that's a big question. And one that deserves to be treated seriously. I suppose marriage is kind of like the next step when you've been together for a while, like we have. And in order to know if it's the right step, you have to ask yourself all sorts of other questions. You know, how would it affect our relationship? Am I ready to settle down again? Is she the right one for me to settle down with? You know, when I think about it like that, I realise that... No. Suki, it's all about the sex. I mean, we are at it like rutting stags every minute you're out of the room. And a couple of times when you were there. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, Suki is brilliant and everything. And I love that she's fond of you and she goes off to get ice creams and what have you. But if I'm honest, Paul, after some of the things she's done to me in the bedroom, I couldn't take her into a church. <laughs> Now, Paul, I'm afraid yours was dripping all over my hand, so I had to give it a bit of a lick. Mmm. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Mm. Oh. <laughs> She's nice, isn't she? Yeah, lovely, yeah. Oh, yeah. get in. Give it a feel. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Real leather. Mmm. Sorry, do you mind if I sort of... No, make yourself at home. Very smooth, isn't it? German design. The whole range has been designed. Look at with... this joker. <laughs> Prick! <laughs> with precision ergonomics. Top of the range, mm. uh, like the stereo. Oh, for God's sake, Sandra, give it a rest, can't you? We've had enough of that all night with your friends. Can we please just have some silence? <laughs> oh, excellent. Is this a GPS thing? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, actually, it's, it's a GPS slash TV slash onboard computer. Uh, pretty cool, you see. Sorry, it's, uh, just a sec. <laughs> It's a fully automated system. No, very impressive. I like all these little compartments and things. Mm. Yes. What kind of mileage does it get? It's, uh, 
Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Of course, I mean, obviously, with the, the larger car, you will have the uh, higher fuel consumption, but uh, no, it actually works out fairly economic, mile for mile. Plenty of room here, isn't there? Oh, yes, yes, very spacious. The boot can take up to... Stop it, you two! Stop it! Jennifer, you stop teasing your brother. Oliver, you stop hitting your sister. The pair of you are... Oh, God! <laughs> Oh God, is everyone all right? Kids, Oliver, are you okay? Sandra? Oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> Sandra? Oh, God, no. <laughs> Sandra! Um, I like it. Do you do a diesel model? <laughs> once in a minute, twice in a week, and once in a year. What is it? Susan. The letter E. Correct. That's the end of the round and the end of the contest. <laughs> and the winner with a critical factor of 16 is housewife Susan Small. <laughs> Susan, you go through to our seventh group final. Christopher, this time you weren't good enough. <laughs> and so that ends this week's series of mental and physical challenges on the critical factor. After a break for Christmas, we'll be back in the new year for more of the same. I do hope you'll join us. Until then, from the contestants and from me, good night. Hi, guys. Now, the build-up to Sportsfest 2010 is really picking up pace. It's a very exciting time for us. And we're very proud because a decision's been made regarding our official logo. Yeah. That's Ooh. right. We have had the best design team in London working on it. Paul Adams, no less has personally worked on this logo. We hope you're as energised and as impressed by it as we are. Mark. Well, without further ado, the official logo for Sportsfest 2010. <laughs> Jason, you don't seem sure. No, no. No. <laughs> I think it's good. Um, I, was, I was just thinking... W w would it work in a different colour? <laughs> Judge for yourself. I mean, here it is in, in pink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I prefer it like that. <laughs> Sue, you've always got something to say. Um, uh, the different colours kind of um, express the diversity of what we're trying to achieve uh -huh, here. Uh -huh. <laughs> what I like about it is it's, uh, it's very forceful. <laughs> very confident. Yes, there's a, a kinetic energy to it and a um, sense of urgency. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's it. I mean, that, that was actually precisely what the brief was. Wow. Yeah. Gary? Yeah, I don't know. Um, don't you think it's a bit, you know, bum sexy? <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I just think it's a little bit kind of... Um, <laughs> you know, a bit... <laughs> Well, no. Um, <laughs> what we've done is we've, we've captured the uh, symbolic handover moment from the relay event. <laughs> I, I think that's really emblematic. And look, 2010. No, no, don't get me wrong. I, I like it. You know, I mean, I really like it. I, I just wonder if it's a little bit... <clears throat> <laughs> you know, but maybe it's just me. Yeah. I don't think anyone else will notice that. No. Negroni. Two Negronis. Thirsty. Very. <laughs> Jazz. Not good. Picky. I know what I like. Oh, I'm sure you do. Accepting drinks from strangers. You should be more careful. And what makes you think I'm going to drink it? I have a feeling for these things. <laughs> First time for everything. What brings a man like you to a... Ooh, ooh, ponytail? <laughs> Now,
Now, over the years, many people have asked me how I came to end up in this confounded chariot. Well, it wasn't pleasant, was it, Fife? I won't forget it in a hurry. You see, Fife and I were painting the ceiling of his drawing room a number of years ago. I was up the ladder and Fife was down below in more of a paint-providing capacity. Isn't that so, Fife? Just so, just so. Whereupon happened my little accident. And, well, we've written a song explaining the rest. <laughs> I thought the pinnacle of frustration in ceiling decoration was getting those flecks of white paint in your hair. But the very devil stalks the land when you're up a ladder, brush in hand, as now we know, but then we're not to wear. If the story we're about to tell might save another, then very well. I won't hold back on details, please take note. You see, when painting up on high, I got something in my eye, and I owe this disposition to that moat. As Brabin stepped down from the rays, there was a parting of the ways. And I did the most acrobatic splits you'll see. But a music stand beneath got my best bits in its teeth as I graced it like the fairy on top of a tree. <laughs> you know that bit between your testicles, testicles and your anus? The bit that's sometimes covered in downy hair. <laughs> oh, there along the seam, the skin that's in between had opened, opened like, like the, the door, door to a beggar's lair. The feeling left me reeling. You'll never paint another ceiling. I'll only ever perform at semi-log. <laughs> and name's a wreck. I've lost me lower deck. And you've left me with a half assed job. <laughs> you know that bit between your testicles and your anus? Indisputably the unloveliest body part. Well, to summarize, there's a hole between my thighs and I can achieve a fine vibrato when I fart. <laughs> As you know, there were a couple of minor problems with the last logo, um, but we've been back to the drawing board. That's right. We realised we needed to throw some serious money at it. Mm. Money well spent, though. So we got Mather, Smith and Epstein on board, and they've come up with something quite different. Lovely and functional. A little bit Bauhaus. <laughs> we're excited. We hope you are too.